Hi everyone, it's Judy. Welcome back to Rose Lane. Today is another um, Sit a Spell Sunday. Um, as you can see, I've worked a little bit on this book uh, since the last video. I have a little bit more that I'm going to be doing to the cover today, but we're just going to plug along and we're going to uh, go on and continue to just discuss things of life. Um, I want to thank everybody who's been leaving me messages um, about how much they enjoyed the last video and, um, you know, learning about my family. There's a lot of people out there who used to sit and just talk about stuff, family, life, things. Um, and they did it with their grandparents or they did it with their children and now their children are grown and uh, they miss it. And this is making them think of things like that. So I'm really glad that um, so far it's been uh, touching the hearts of anybody who's been watching. So let's hope we can continue on with that. Um, I've often said that I'm a rather boring person um, and I'm kind of an introvert, so I don't do a whole lot of talking about me. Um, so this is a stretch for me. But anyway, so today what we're gonna do is I have a quote here um, which kind of spoke to me a little bit. And it's from Michael Jordan. Now, I'm not a sports person. I just said to my husband today, um, somebody had put up on Facebook uh, maybe about a week or so ago about the um, Super Bowl. And they said the best thing about uh, Super Bowl is uh, food and the commercials. Who cares how many baskets they make? Well, I'm a little more sports savvy than that. However, not by much. And I do know who Michael Jordan is, and I do know that he was a basketball player, but this was a quote from Michael Jordan. And he says, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games, 26 times. I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and missed. I have failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. I thought that was, a pretty inspiring quote for me um, because I think about, um, you know, being an introvert, which is what I am. I don't know if anybody out there does personality tests or, you know, knows anything about them, but I, <laughs> I love to take tests. I, I loved it in school. I just love taking tests. And, um, so I got some glue or something on here. I'm not sure what that is. Um, and the odd thing about it is when I took the personality tests, one of the descriptions say, your personality type loves to take tests. So I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so true. But um, so anyway, I'm trying to decide which ones I want to use here. Um, I think I'm going to go... I think I'm going to go a little, a little different here. Um, no, maybe I'm not. Maybe that was the right size. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure what size I tried to take. Anyway, um, so I take these personality tests. And I'm just going to turn this so that I can see this a little bit better. Um, and no matter what test I take, by whom, no matter how many questions or how they word it, um, I always come out to be the same thing, which is an INFJ. Now, according to what they say, and I'm sorry, I'm sniffling. I'm, I think it's just the change in the weather. Um, according to what they say, uh, INFJ is the um, rarest uh, personality type. We're generally the most misunderstood and... Oops, I'm trying to get this one to come up. It doesn't want to come up. There we go. Um, we're generally the most misunderstood because there's more extroverts, apparently, in the world than there are introverts. And of all the introverts, my personality type is like, I don't know. Some some say 1% to 2% of the population. I don't know how well these will stay, but we'll see. Um, some say uh, 2 to 3% or one to 3% of the population. In either case, there's not apparently very many of us. We have a tendency to understand people better 
then people understand us. And um, try to make sure I'm getting these kind of straight here. Would be good. Um, so uh, that being said, my being an introvert, anybody who knows what an introvert is, is somebody, whoops, somebody who we're not necessarily, I mean, we can be shy. And I did go through that phase when I was younger. Um, being, you know, I was shy phase, but we just think a little differently than most people. And we listen and don't say as much, um, generally. I have learned how to speak up. Um, I partly, mostly started because of my work. My job required me to speak to people. <laughs> I actually had to open my mouth and speak to people. Um, and and funny thing is, is I love to teach and I love to write. Um, my, it's my retirement plan besides doing these things, guys. Um, it's about six and a half years. We should be able to retire. And I'll finally, I hope, have the time where I can write. Um, I think I talked before about writing stories and I had written a story for one of my nephews, my grand nephew. Um, this is not easy. <laughs> um, and I'll probably end up publishing that story. Um, maybe sooner, probably rather than later, uh, or trying to publish it anyway, we'll see. Um, but it's always been my heart's desire to write. Um, so, but all that being said, uh, you know, being the introvert as I am, we were not, we're not risk takers. We're not adventurers, generally speaking. Um, we're what they call those armchair adventurers. This is still a little loose because I didn't glue this down because I, I'm thinking about putting like a little dangle off of here. So um, it's just kind of hanging there till I make up my mind. But anyway, we're armchair adventurers. We like the safety of our homes. Um, and take our adventure that way. So I am um, gonna leave that one just in case, just in case. Um, I love reading and I love learning and I love books and oh, wow. It's really looking nice. I'm liking this. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, I'm gonna go this this way I think I'll go this way so anyway I um I was always afraid uh, introverts to at least my m me uh tend to be or want to be at least perfectionists I don't want to say that we are maybe some are I am not I want to be I try hard to be, <laughs> but I'm not always so sure um, that I actually succeed. So mm, looking at this, I don't know, this might be a little too big for me, but that is my hope is that I try very hard. I pay a lot of attention to detail. I want to be successful. I want to do it right. And sometimes that bogs me down. And um, I'm so busy trying to make it right that I never get it done, if that makes sense. Um, so even at my age, it's a learning curve for me to try to accept the fact that if I want to succeed, I have to fail. I have to allow myself that failure. Um, so I'm still learning that. And uh, when I read this quote, it really did speak to me. Now, not that I ever aspired to be a basketball player, um, but I understand where he's coming from. There was a, another quote, and I have actually had seen it on billboards. Um, I don't you know, back here, back, back east here. Um, I had seen it and, uh, 
it is, um, let me go back this way and come down a little bit here. Um, it is about Thomas Edison, and it says that Edison tried a thousand times to create the light bulb, and he failed 999 times. But the thousandth time, he got it right. And it's the, the billboard was about perseverance, you know, just keeping focused. I want to do it this way a little bit. I like that. Um, keeping focus, keeping your, uh, what do I want to say? Ooh, that's the wrong one. Keeping your, um, not perspective, but keeping your goal, I guess, really in mind, you know, staying strong, persevering, keeping your mind and your eye on what it is you're trying to achieve and knowing that you're gaining knowledge with all that you do. Um, I think that's really, really an important thing. Um, so I had mentioned in my last video how my mother had said, um, her job as my mom was to teach me how to get along in the world without me, with, well, without her, um, because she wasn't always going to be there. I was, you know, I talked about, you know, making the phone call to her when I got scared when I was babysitting because I watched the dumb movie and scared. I mean, how... How stupid can you be to be a babysitter and watch a movie about babysitting, which is a horror movie. That was just like, I don't know if I've ever done anything dumber in my life. Well, probably, but that was right up there at the top. And um, so she wasn't always going to be there for that phone call when I would do something stupid and scare myself. She wasn't always going to be there to help me out of a bind she was there to teach me how to live, uh, how to love, and and that is part of living, learning how to love and love properly, uh, learning how to forgive um, and move on in life, learning how to grieve and mourn and still function. Oh, I went too far. Well, maybe not. You know, I think I'm going to just keep going. My original thought was to have it shorter, but I think I'm just going to go on down to the top here. Um, <clears throat> it was amazing. I I had always said, even before I had my son, that if I could be half the mother to my children, that my mother was to me. Even half, you know, half the woman that my mother was. Um... I would be a very lucky, lucky woman. Um, okay, one more. And uh, I don't know that I've reached that. Um, don't know that I ever will. But I am so grateful for the things that she taught me. I'm grateful for the, I'm so grateful for such a huge family. Um, I am so grateful for such a huge family because there is an old saying um, that it takes a village to raise a child. In my case, my aunts and uncles raised us as much as my mother did. Um, we had an amazing, and I say had because, you know, I'm in my 60s now and I've lost so many. Um, there's only uh, three... I'm trying to think. Three left? Two left? We have uh, three. There's only three of the girls, three of the seven sisters of my mom, uh, you know, my mom's generation. And all the all the men are gone. All the boys are gone. The sons. Whoops. I'm, I'm losing these guys, and I don't, don't want to do that. Uh, all the sons are, are gone now. And there's three of the seven girls that are left. One is um, 93, 
at 93 or about to be 93. One is 90. She, or she'll be about to be 90. I think I put this in crooked. That's why I'm having an issue. Um, not crooked, but like wrong. It's, I don't think it's square. Um, one is about 90. The other one's about 93. And then the last one is like 82. Uh, she's the youngest one. She was the one who, I'm not sure if I had mentioned that in the last video or not. She had had a car accident when she was 17 and um, she died actually when they had to resuscitate her. And I can tell you that story. I'll tell you that story here um, right now. I'm hoping these will stick. I'll have to put them under some sort of a test. <laughs> make sure that they actually stay. Um, she was the youngest, my Aunt Pat, and they lived in upstate New York. And it was November. My mother was pregnant with me. And uh, I'm trying to see how I want this. Um, and my aunt was in a car with some friends. And... Uh, it was it's still, it's still country up there, but it was even more rural back in 1959. And they were driving along and were going around a bend in the road and there was um, wet leaves on the road. And uh, the car skidded that they were in. It was two boys and two girls uh, and the boys were in the front, and the girls were in the back, one of which was my aunt. And um, they uh, skidded and swerved, and they hit a telephone pole, which broke. I don't recall the um, fate of the boys. No, these were the days before um, seat belts. So... Um, there were, they weren't wearing, of course, any seat belts. And my aunt was thrown from the car, from the back seat through the front seat, through the windshield, and then out the front of the car. That was how strong uh, the impact was. And, um, you know, they took her to the hospital and there was all kinds of damage and she needed surgeries and things. And she had swallowed a lot of gravel because she hit the ground with her face and, uh, she was like 17 at the time or something. And she's get, just getting ready, 17, 18. She was just getting ready. She's going to be going to nursing school, I think, the following year. And, of course, that she did survive, obviously. Um, but that whole dream uh, went out the window for her. Um, but she was thrown from the car Technically, she passed away a couple of times, and they revived her. Um, I think I'm going to actually do it this way, because that is what I'm going to do. Um, and uh, she had to learn how to walk and talk and um, do all kinds of stuff all over again, feed herself, all kinds of things. And... Um, my mother was pregnant with me. That was in November and I was, she was due with me in December. And um, they weren't sure that they wanted to tell my mother, the siblings, because they didn't want to put her into any kind of distress or whatever. And um, they opted to tell her because they figured she'd be really mad if anything happened. Uh, and ultimately that, you know, my Aunt Pat didn't make it. Um, that my mother would be very upset that nobody told her and gave her the opportunity to make up her own mind as to, you know, what to do. She was a very strong woman, like I said. And uh, I, I'm feeling like this just isn't tight enough for me. Instead of fighting with it, I'm just going to let it go. <laughs> I can use it elsewhere. Um, so um, they told her. Now, like I said, we lived in New Jersey was in upstate New York. Now, my mom didn't go up to uh, upstate New York until the spring after I was born. And um, these little guys over here. 
Um, so it was May. It was in the spring, May, my favorite month. And my anchor, who was there, um, who was still single at the time, because you know that she had lost her husband in World War II, um, she was there helping my grandmother to take care of my aunt. And we had a very, the women in my family are very, very strong. Um, I'm not sure that I live up to their, their reputation <laughs> of being strong. Um, and uh, my aunt wanted to hold me. And the one who had had the accident. And my other aunt said to her, you can't hold her. Because she's going to expect you to talk to her. And if he won't say her name, she's not going to understand. So you have to say her name. And my aunt kept saying, you know, kind of motioning that she couldn't talk, couldn't talk. And she said, well, you know, I'm sorry, but can't have her. You can't have her unless you'll talk. And um, I'm going to have to. This was not what I planned. <laughs> and um, so... Finally, after a while of not giving in to my Aunt Patsy, um, she mouthed my name in a very, you know, uh, mumbly kind of way, but she said my name. And they allow her, allowed her to hold me because she said my name. And that is what got her talking. So the first word that my aunt had said after her accident was my name. Um... So that's kind of a, it makes you feel a little special, you know, like you had a purpose, even as a, as a infant, I was only, you know, five months old. I had nothing to do with any of it. And, um, you know, it was just, it was a nice, I'm going to take this off. It was a nice thing to know that it was something just about my being born, um, that she wanted to uh, to hold me so she would say my name. I'm going to kind of stand this up and try to work with it this way. I'm just guessing at this stuff, guys. This is called creative license, right? Um, so anyway, um, so that was that story uh, with my aunt there. I'm not sure where I was before. I told you I'd get off track. Um, but just talking about... Uh, failures and you'll never succeed if you don't try and you never you know what I do I think I'll just lay it flat like that it's probably smarter right uh you'll never succeed if you don't try and the only way you'll learn is if you try um so just don't give up this was something I just, I've told the story before um, in my uh, videos. This is going to be a tight one, I think. Um, about how I got into doing junk journals. And that was because I wanted to uh, make family genealogy books for my siblings and their spouses and myself and my husband as well. And uh, so I, what the plan was to, you know, Christmas gifts get expensive. And I mean, we now we're getting small children in our family again, but at the time we didn't, you know, we didn't have any, any babies. All our kids were older, grown, you know, in their, at least in their twenties. Um, getting into their 30s. And uh, so there were no babies in the family at that point. So my thought was to give a gift of family to my family members. Uh, that would be to make these books. I'll do it this way. Whoops. I have more over here in case I need it. To make these books and give them to my family members and each year to make a be this beautiful book. And that was where I was, how I got started on all of this to make these beautiful books and, um, 
however they were going to turn out. This is not going to be easy. <laughs> it's going to want to stick to my fingers all the way. Um, and then each year, give my family members a um, paper of some kind. Now, I used to do calligraphy. Um, I'm probably not going to be all that great at it anymore uh, because of my eyesight. I don't know. My hands give me trouble. Um, I haven't done it in a very long time, so I'm going to have to be trying to practice that again if I can. Um, but I um, thought that I would get a newspaper article, perhaps about a, a family member or something, a story about, you know, something that they did or um, what was happening in their place where they lived at the time, maybe some kind of local history, uh, maybe certainly so how they res how they might have been responding to national, you know, whatever was going on nationally. Um, you know, just putting these stories in. I would print the stories on my computer, um, but I would leave the first letter space open like in old books where you would see a great big um, ornate letter at the beginning of a chapter or something like that. And I would do, my plan was to then hand do an illuminated letter for that spot. And uh, so that was my plan, which was great, but I couldn't figure out how I could do a book where I could add that every year. And that was my issue. That was my problem. So, oops, I think a pearl just popped off over here. It did. Okay, so that tells me I'm going to have to go back and put some glue on these puppies, I think. That's all right. Um, it's getting stuck on the cheesecloth. Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to go back and scrunch this up a little bit more so that's not a problem. Um, well, it is a problem, but it's not a problem, if you know what I mean. So anyway, I um, was looking online, trying to figure out what I would do, how I didn't want to do a loose leaf. I didn't want the rings. Uh, I wanted it to look like an old book. And loose leaves just don't look like old books, you know, uh, not to me anyway. And uh so I'm trying to figure out how in the world am I going to make it so that every year I could send, you know, a page with photographs or, you know, story or something, uh, even the charts, you know, the family charts or whatever. How in the world am I going to do that? Um, without having a loose leaf book. So I started looking online for all different kinds of options. And I came across, the only thing I knew at the time was scrapbooking. I, I mean, I didn't know it, I knew of it. Uh, so I started looking at YouTube um, for scrapbook ideas. And scrapbooks weren't quite exactly what I wanted. I wanted something a little bit more eclectic, a little bit more put together over the years, sort of like you would have a, um, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of, a trunk in your grandmother's attic or something like that, where, I think I'm just going to go ahead with this piece here and put this down, scrunch it up a little bit more. I'll scrunch it as I go um, so that when you come across a trunk in like your grandmother's attic or somebody's attic, it would be, you'd open it up and there'd be a top layer. Um, and then you'd remove that top layer, you know, of whatever they were, boxes with letters or pieces of clothing. And underneath that layer would be something else. There'd be another layer of other things, new surprises, new treasures. Um, and that was the kind of feel I wanted for the book. Um, so scrapbooks were just too planned, too straight, um, you know, measured out, 
to the exact, um, if you understand what I'm saying, and not that they're not beautiful, they are, but it just wasn't quite the feel that I was looking for. So scrapbooks, of course, then led me to junk journaling, which I think had probably been around for a little while. Um, and I think I kind of maybe got into it at the time, sticking to my fingers, at the time when they were switching a little bit from actual always junk to digitals and using scrapbook paper and things like that. I, I'm really not sure how long uh, this is this is this kind of stuff has been available, but I think that's kind of about the time um, I found all of it. And it showed me a little bit more and it looked a little bit more like what I would have wanted um, for my books. I found post um, books, kind of like the old scrapbooks or, or photo albums that they would have had, like, you know, in the Victorian times, later Victorian times, 1800s, early 1900s or something, where you can, you know, you unscrew the posts and then you can put the pages in. So I was like, oh, this is going to be great. Which, let me tell you, it's been years so far. I still haven't done it. But uh, my intention's there. I'll get to it. I swear. <laughs> These days. Bless my sweet family. They're, they're hanging on. They're waiting. Um, but uh, uh, you know what? This is just a little too thick right here. I'm going to cut that piece down. So that is how I found junk journals. That is how I found um, doing this. And, uh, I have been in love with it ever since. So it really was quite a, a boon for me. Let me thin this out up here too, because I don't want to cover these, um, to find this. Now I fell in love with it. I watched videos after videos, after videos, after videos, after videos. I can't tell you how many videos I watched, um, trying to learn about this and, uh, you know, working on, you know, trying to collect stuff and, you know, things like that and all of that kind of stuff. And, um, it took me from January of 2019 to October of 2019 before I actually made anything. And, uh, I just, I started over, I don't know how many times I'd start something and it would be like, oh God, this isn't what, this isn't what I see these ladies make. This doesn't look anything like that. This is terrible. This is awful. This is, you know, and I guess we are, we could be our own worst critics, can't we? So, um, I just went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth with that. And, um, you know, hoping and trying that, that I would be able to do this. Now, I think what I'm going to do, because this is never meant to come off, I'm going to glue this right to the thing here. So that's what I'm doing, in case you guys don't know. Um, I want to make it so the pages come out, but not that this comes off. Uh, so <laughs> I went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And finally, I just hit on something and it all started to click, at least for me. Now, when I look back at the video and I look back at some of the pieces that I still have, half done pieces, things I started to put together and, you know, ne maybe never quite finished or whatever. And I compare that to some of the work I'm doing now. I think, my goodness, why would I have ever thought this, that I was doing this well? Because this is not good. You know, <laughs> this is not good. And um, it's not a matter of it being perfect. It's a matter of art. It's a matter of learning. Um, and you do it over and over again until you feel that you've gotten what you'd hoped for. So there's a lot of people that will, you know, send me messages either on Facebook or, or through the YouTube channel and, you know, tell me how much they admire my work and they could never possibly do what I do. And let me tell you, you can, you can and better um, than what I do. Believe me. Um, it's, it's just a matter of just plugging away at it. I, I hope 
over the years. I will plug away at it and get a little bit better as time goes on. Um, I'm hoping that will be the case for me. Um, it may, it may not. I don't know. I'm trying. Um, and sometimes I fail. A lot of times, most times, I shouldn't even say sometimes, most times I am failing. And, um, you know, I just keep plugging away. Don't get discouraged. Don't think, you know, you could never achieve it and just give up. I wanted to give up. And you know what? I'll tell you the truth. You know what kept me from giving up? was that I had gotten digitals, I had gotten scissors, because I had other things. Like I said, I did calligraphy and stuff, but I had no glue, I had no tape, I had no scissors, I had no fabric, I had no lace, I had no ribbon, because, you know, I didn't use that <laughs> with calligraphy. So it's like, I didn't have anything, so I had to get stuff. So here I am sitting in a room, getting frustrated because... This was supposed to be for a swap and there was the date was coming and I didn't want to be late. And believe me, I got that that thing entered about 10 minutes before the deadline. And um, I uh, I was so angry. Oh, my goodness. I could have cried. I was so angry with myself. And I said, you know, I maybe this was a mistake. Maybe I should have never tried this. I shouldn't have done this, you know. But I got all this stuff. What am I going to do with this stuff? I've got to do something. So I need to persevere. I need to just do it. If for nothing else, I have invested in all these things. And they've got to go somewhere. So that is more or less why I kept going. Um, my frustration has come over the years because I'm trying to cover the, you know, keep this down so that you don't see the... Um, elastic. So I keep pressing at it. Um, so my um, frustration has come as if for those of you who have been following me, maybe some of you are new um, or newish uh, about, you know, my husband's surgeries, my surgeries. 20, 2021 was a very, very difficult year for us. And I was missing for more than half the year from doing this at least six months, if not more. And I had commitments and I'm looking at videos and I'm thinking, my goodness, I would love to do that. I would love to try that. I would love, 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 love. And I just couldn't get to it. Um, so that's been my biggest frustration, I think, um, is not having the time. Uh, because practice does make perfect. And when I decided now this year, because it was tough for me last year, um, in 2021, we had our surgeries, 2022, we had to move again for the second time in two years. Um, we had moved in 2020 and then we moved again in 2022. Uh, and every time I move, of course, I have to pack everything up and, uh, just going to check my time guys and see how we're doing. Oh, we're good. Okay. Um, I still have time. I think I lost another guy that might've been the one which I've lost up here now. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little glue on this spot. I'm probably gonna end up going back and testing each one of these and see um, if, they'll, if they're holding on. But anyway, um, so it just had frustrated me so because I couldn't get back to it. And we moved here. Honestly, I'm still unpacking. When I talk about unpacking my, my craft room here, um, it's not just my craft room. It's my entire house. I have boxes everywhere. Um, it's just still, and we've been here for seven months. Um, so, yeah, it's been, it's been kind of nuts. And uh, so I'm still working on all of that stuff. And uh, trying to unpack and trying to organize. And uh, it takes me a really long time. We're hoping we're going to stay here for a while because um, uh, that will give us time to actually go through all of the stuff that we've accumulated over the years, it seems. And, you know, start reorganizing and, you know, doing those kinds of things. But the thing of it is, is that 
if you don't keep trying, no matter what it is, I'm not just talking about, you know, making journals or whatever, but anything, if you don't keep trying, you're never going to succeed. You know, there's that old saying, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Um, and uh, that's really, truly, I guess, the, the point of it all. Like Michael Jordan says, he goes, the reason why he's a success is because he's failed. You know, you learn how to do things by failure. When I first started coming back into this just this year, you know, even this past week, um, I had this. I, I saw the papers. They were beautiful. I got the papers. I got things cut out. And I would sit here and just stare at them and go, I don't know what to do with this. I feel like I don't have enough, um, you know, enough options here um, for me. I just couldn't quite, you know, figure out what to do. And then I just started kind of playing with it a little bit and things started taking shape. Things started making sense. Um, so I was very happy, you know, working, continuing to work after the last video, uh, video for, I had just done the cover with the lace on it. Um, I was very happy to get back to it because I had all these ideas and finally, I felt like something was clicking for me. So the moral here today um, is just don't give up. No matter how you might feel, no matter what the circumstances in life may be. Um, again, you know, I have this whole issue with my eye. I worry that because it was so easy for me to lose the sight in my right eye, it'll be just as easy uh, for that possibility to happen in my left eye. And I am petrified that that could happen. Um, so it has changed my attitude towards things. Uh, not that I want to see ugly, <laughs> but I am grateful for everything that I see. Uh, I pay more attention. I thought I paid attention before. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't pay near the kind of attention um, to sunsets and and things that I had before I took far too much for granted um thinking that there you just never think that one day you'll wake up and you won't be able to see um so it's giving me given has given me a new perspective in that regard I'm trying to find the lace I don't know where I put it now here it is um it's giving me a new perspective into how I want to live um, and what's important. Uh, well, that quote that I read last night, not last night, uh, last, last video for last Sunday, where it says, um, the good life requires the good, the good, the good life requires that we take pleasure in new things, but a good life requires that we take pleasure in the moments. Um, a good life means getting ahead, but to enjoy a, a, the good life means getting ahead, but to enjoy a good life, you have to make the trip worthwhile. Um, and it's not a matter, you know, a good life, having a successful life for, for many is making sure that the money is there for things and that's good, but you want to feed your soul even more because those are the important things. Those are truly the important things in life. Um, I'm going to make this rather big because uh, I have a feeling this is going to get very fat by the time I'm done. Um, so, like my mother said, she would always tell me, live your life true to yourself. You be true to God and true to yourself. And you don't worry about what other people say or what other people think. You be true to yourself and you be true to God. And that is the very best you could hope for. Um, know who you are. I had taken, and I wish I could find it in all honesty, I had taken this, <laughs> this test because um, I'm always searching to try to figure out who I am and, and you know, what I'm going to do. Uh, with my life. I'm 63 years old and I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with my life. And uh, I 
my personality. I want to make a difference. I want to make a real difference. And my husband had asked me once, um, if I could do anything, you know, if we had won the lottery or something like that, and I could do anything, what would I want to do? If I, if I had funds to spend on something, what would I want to do? And this was a while back. This was before I even decided to start doing uh, genealogy books for my family, let alone, excuse me, I was scratching my nose, let alone, um, you know, doing the junk journals or doing the journals like this. And I said, I want to bring beauty into the world. I said, we've lost beauty. That was at the time, and they're still doing it, and I'm having an issue here with these. I'm going to have to make sure I reseal them. Um, they were talking about, and they have done now, my, I'm just wiping my nose, uh, about eliminating handwriting from school. And heartbreaking to me, heart, heart, heartbreaking to me, because I did calligraphy. And I loved all the old manuscripts and I loved all the old books and, uh, you know, the, the hand made, I mean, they made books beautiful because it meant something. It wasn't just something to do. They made them beautiful. And, uh, so I was like, I want to bring beauty into the world. I want to make sure that kids know how to write in cursive, not just everyday, ordinary, write in cursive but I want them to know how to uh, do calligraphy, how to do beautiful writing. Now, I'm by no means an expert, but I, I could teach informally a little bit. I'm sure a student will surpass its teacher in, in my case, um, but I could do that. Uh, you know, I said, I just wanna bring beautiful things into the world, too many things um, have gone away. They've died away. And uh, I'd, I'd like to revive old things. My mother was an embroiderer. She taught me how to embroider when I was just a little girl. She started me when I was probably four years old, showing me how to embroider. Um, you know, yes, people are embroidering these days, but they don't do it the way they did. Um, not the way they used to. And and I'm just as guilty. It's not like I'm, you know, <laughs> doing it all the time. I don't do it near enough. But uh, you can make beautiful things. Um, lace making. I stink at it, by the way. But I do have a lovely friend, and some of you may know who she is, uh, Linda Price, who does beautiful tatting. And she had inspired me to try again. I got the needles and the thread and stuff and I started, but it got packed up. And honestly, at the moment, I'm not sure where it is. Um, so, uh, yeah, I haven't, <laughs> haven't found that yet. Uh, but I'd like to try. And, and when I did get it, um, that was before I lost the sight in my right eye. So I'm not sure exactly how, um, how good I'll do at that again. Uh, but we'll see, you know, we'll see. And, uh, maybe, maybe it won't be so bad. I, I could still do this though. I think I get things a little crooked sometimes, but I can still do this. Um, but, uh, you know, I just, I said, I want to bring beautiful things into the world. I want to have a contribution. I want to inspire people um, and help them to want to live good and better lives. Help them to learn uh, from life circumstances. Um, for instance, when I write, and I say when, because that is my goal, to start writing maybe a little before retirement, but definitely in retirement when I have some more time. Um, I want to uh, write books that inspire people. Historical fiction is my favorite uh, type of genre. And 
I wanted to write stories, historical fiction stories, but stories that would get people to stop and think for a minute. Um, what lesson could they learn here? I'm not ready to put that back yet. You know, what lesson could they learn here? What, um, and maybe not necessarily even say, what can I take away from this book? But to be inspired, like I can be oftentimes with a writer, by a specific quote, um, you know, a certain thing that they say, and it gets me thinking. Uh, I love that. I love when that happens for me. And um, I, I would love to be able to do that for other people. Um, that they would come away feeling... I don't know, not just that they read a good book, not just entertained, but come away in a way a better person uh, than they were before. Um, you know, just something that that helps them to grow, something that helps them to live better. And I don't mean live better like necessarily doing the right things like they would have done something wrong, but to have a better, deeper sense of life and living, a better, deeper sense of um, a quality of life. It is short and, you know, we don't want to lose any of that time um, if we can avoid it. Uh, yeah, we don't want to lose any of that time if we can avoid it by just not paying attention to how deeply we may be living, you know, and I'm deeply like, like not losing sight of what's important. Um, being with your family, uh, taking the time uh, to spend with your family and your friends and your loved ones. You know, I'm of the time period, grew up with John Denver, um, and I do know that he had a lot of, you know, references in some of his songs, more kind of hippie type of references, but the man did write some beautiful lyrics. And, um, he, uh, wrote a song. I'm trying, I'll be right with you here. He wrote a song called, uh, Poems and Prayers and Promises. And in a way, I guess maybe that's a little bit of what I'm trying to do here. Um, the song, the uh, chorus in the song says, to, we talk of poems and prayers and promises and things that we believe in. How sweet it is to love someone. How right it is to care. How long it's been since yesterday. And what about tomorrow? And what about our dreams? and all the memories we share. That is, I think I have to make this a little bit bigger for these grommets. That is um, the whole idea. Oh, this doesn't work. <laughs> uh, that is the whole idea behind, I don't know where my other one is. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to try to make these go through whether I like it or not. Uh, that's the whole idea behind this. Um, well, I wasn't so bad. Is to talk about things that matter. To talk about um, our hopes and our dreams. Where are we going in life? I'm just going to try to make this one a smidge bigger on the side. I apparently have... Um, Is this something stuck in there? No. I apparently have uh, slightly too big grommets here for these holes. There we go. That's a little better. Um, I'll put that away later. No, I won't. I need it, don't I? Um, to talk about things that move us, that motivate us, that cause us to love, cause us to, to live. Um, 
and just have that quality in our life. Uh, I messed that one up. Have that quality in our life that, um, wow, I messed that one up. Um, that says when, when we go to bed at night um, and we lay there and we think, I know I bent these, but you know what? I kind of like the way that looks. It just makes them look more aged and less perfect, which is kind of a little bit of what I'm going for. Um, but to have that quality, that depth of life and living that when we put our heads on the pillow at night, that, um, we feel as though we actually lived today. We feel as though we actually loved today. Um, and we met, not just that we mattered, but what we did mattered. Who we were with mattered. Um, so that's kind of, I guess, the goal of trying to, um, trying to do this. I think I'm trying to think how I want to do this. Um, I think that's just kind of the goal of that in bringing some thought into our lives, remembering those who have touched our lives, uh, sharing what we've learned from people and each other, you know, from other people and from people that we are with now, keeping the memory alive of those who have gone before us um, and, and bringing that down to the generations to the, you know, that are coming after us. We forget far too many things um, anymore, I think. Um, I'm trying to think how I want to do this we forget far too i'm looking for my tweezers guys uh we forget far too many things about life and living we've become too um i don't know i don't want to say independent necessarily but we want that up to the top Ooh, better still. I see what I'm going to do. Um, got to turn it around the other way. Um, solitary. I guess that's the word. We've become too solitary in our lives. Uh, even with our own families, I think sometimes we don't sit around the dinner table anymore. Uh, as a general rule, I'm not saying that's true for every family, but for many families, that is the truth. You know, the kids are off someplace else. We've got our cell phones. We've got, you know, all this stuff that we do um, and distract us from each other. I mean, when I see people in the same room or a room away texting each other instead of sitting in each other's company, I don't. I don't understand that, you know, and maybe that's because I, you know, I came out of a different generation where you actually talk to people, you know, um, we become very isolated and lonely, even with our family and perhaps even our friends. Um, so I don't know. I think there's a lot to be said for sitting on that front porch, um, or as one of my, uh, subbies, I said, she would sit on, on the screen porch with her grandparents and they would talk about life and things. We don't do that anymore, do we? You know, I think we talk more about what we've achieved or what we're trying to achieve. We talk to our kids about their grades and, um, did I just do this backwards again? Not sure what I've done. I think I did. Um, you know, about their sports or about this. The, the talking is superficial. We don't talk about the deeper things of life. Um, we don't have to get intense about it. 
but just let the conversation sort of flow. And um, really, read a poem. What does it mean? You know, read a hymn in, you know, your church songbook and really look at it. Um, and then talk about it. it. It's not a matter of, you know, it just talk. We need to just talk and relate to each other again. I just don't think we do anymore. And I find it kind of sad. That one came out a lot better than this one did, didn't it? I'm not sure what's going on, but it did. <laughs> um, I don't know. We'll see. But, um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of where I am, I guess, with that at the moment. And, again, that's sort of the purpose here. So talking about trying, talking about persevering, talking about not giving up, talking about... And I'm not just saying for things in general, but I'm saying for life and living life um, and not giving up on that. Um, find that depth, find that meaning, uh, find that purpose and live it. Grasp it with both hands and don't let it go and just live in the moment for the moment create those memories um because they mean everything um stay with your families talk with them have relationships with them not superficial an inch deep and a mile wide but let's make it an inch wide and a mile deep and um just like my, my little thing says, let's create something beautiful in this world. Find how to bring beauty into this world, no matter what it is through writing or journal making or whatever it might be or whatever you think is beautiful. And bring it in and enrich this world and enrich your children so they'll enrich their children. And don't let... The things of the past die away because people think that they don't matter anymore. They matter more than ever these days. So that's sort of my two cents today, guys. So I'm going to stop here because, oh my gosh, we've gotten over an hour. I don't know how much of this I've been off <laughs> the screen. But in any case, that's going to be it for today. So in the meantime, guys, be safe, be happy, be blessed. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.